Okay, today we're talking about 10 things that you should carry in your bushcraft backpack. Now, for this video, not all of these things are necessarily similar. A lot of them are designed to cover multiple different aspects of bushcrafting and wilderness living. But I thought that these were 10 items that I find pretty unique that I like to use a lot. And I think things that are very useful once you start to implement and things that I find myself carrying very frequently out in the wilderness. So let's jump right into this. So this first one probably will not come as a surprise to too many people. I've been talking about and mentioning machetes on the channel and their implementation in general field life and bushcrafting quite a bit here of late, but I do think the machete makes a pretty neat tool. Now with these 10 items that your bushcrafting pack should have, these aren't necessarily requisites every time you go out, but just really cool items that I think should make it into your pack at some point during your practice. Even even if you just give them a shot and you know try to experiment with them i think some of these tools especially some more than others like the machete are pretty awesome tools and that you will definitely enjoy to use and carry even if it is not every single time you go out okay so the next one is the grail geo press now this one i've talked about on the channel before it's not necessarily new but i think that the grail geo press is a really cool piece of kit and i actually really like the geo press because it's an extremely versatile and extremely useful water filter that uh, is is not only super portable and packable but also the actual filter cartridge on this is capable of handling and filtering a lot of different foreign matters so it's a you know chemical filter as well as a bacteria or biological filter um, this is going to be able to get rid of viruses bacteria chemicals all those fun things that you don't want to consume so this is a very useful filter and while it's not the most versatile or the most or the highest output filter this one is certainly pretty good okay so sticking in line with the cooking equipment we're going to take a look at my two favorite pieces of cookware so the first one is the Boy Scouts of America mess kit. And while this one's pretty basic and similar to a lot of the other gear here, I have covered this in another video. I think that the BSA cook kit, if you have not tried one out or if you not, if you haven't used one already, I think they are a really righteous addition because not only can they be found on eBay for really affordable prices, you know, sub $20 sometimes. Um, they are also super versatile. So, you know, you have your pan or your kind of plate, you have your skillet, you have a pot, a mug. And so you basically have all your bases covered in one singular kit that is pretty darn durable and like I said super affordable so these little kits while they are less and less by the day and there are definite downsides you know this might be a little bit small for some people this is a very versatile kit that I think at least deserves to be tried out I know I've put a few miles on my mess kit as you guys can kind of see there the stark difference between the skillet and the plate but uh, this is definitely a very righteous option and I really enjoy my mess kit that's why I recommend it to anyone else out there so next to that kit is of course the Vargo bot these basically make up the lion's share of my mess kit or my cook kit but the Vargo bot is super user-friendly super versatile and once again you can tell I've put just a few miles on my Vargo bot as well this is one of my favorite cook systems especially for cooking up things like wild teas wild coffees or bush coffees uh, this thing handles most of those types of ventures even if it just comes to making up hot water for pre-made uh, or MRE styled meals like mountain house meals this is still the primary piece of kit that I use to this is still the primary piece of kit that I use in those processes so definitely a super handy super versatile piece of kit that I highly recommend alongside the BSA mess kit okay the next one is a canvas drop cloth and the reason why I like the canvas drop cloth is because or for several reasons one if you are operating in wet boggy kind of areas and you need to set that sit down or set gear down this acts as a very good kind of protector to throw on the ground so that you're not getting your gear your pack yourself wet but it also serves as a place 
for meal prep. It serves as something that you can put berries or, you know, natural resources that you're harvesting. Um, there's really just a million uses for a little drop cloth like this. And so not only can it fold up into the size of something, you know, about yay big, but it is also supremely useful. And something like a canvas drop cloth like this one is going to be super durable, water resistant, and pretty well life resistant. And so you can also use this as a part of a sleep system if you need to crash on the ground. Uh, this is just a very useful piece of kit and it's very simple, stupidly simple, but it is something that, because of what it is, you can find a million and one ways to actually use this. So the next one for me is actually something handmade and something that I think should be handmade for most people. And that is a very basic handmade um, fire kit or fire pouch, whatever you want to call it. And you could even make it a possibles kit or possibles pouch, but something that is pretty basic, you know, follows a generic kind of, you know, simple drawstring leather style like this uh, is really awesome. And this one is one that I handmade with some leather that I had lying around and then I drilled out this little bit of, I believe this was actually willow, and uh, made a little toggle for it. So this is all handmade, you know, pretty pretty basic. Uh, it does use paracord as opposed to a natural cordage, but aside from that, everything else is pretty natural. And this is just a basic handmade fire kit that I like to carry and, you know, keep stocked with natural um, fire starters. So if I want to do more traditional fire starting, like a fire steel or a bow drill, this is what I'll use in addition to that fire starting method. But I think it's something that's a nice little touch and actually, you know, a, a kind of personal little touch uh, for your kit. So even if you run something like a, you know, kind of nylon or cordura backpack, you know, having something that's, you know, kind of rustic, handmade leather, you know, natural materials is really nice. So the next tool in the mix is going to be a Swiss Army knife. Now there's many different Swiss Army knives out there. I'm a personal fan of the Huntsman and uh, Farmer. Uh, those are my personal two favorite Swiss Army knives, but a Swiss Army knife or a Victorinox is one really awesome addition that you can add to your pack. They're usually pretty small, pretty lightweight, even 91 millimeter. Swiss Army knives are not that big to carry, and so long as you don't get one that's super thick, uh, they offer a good amount of versatility in small, fine crafting tools and camp tools, as well as, you know, being extremely portable and honestly, something that you can throw in a pack and totally forget about. And next to that Swiss Army knife, kind of Swiss Army knife colored, is a strop. Now, I've talked about sharpening systems in the past, and I do think that having a good ceramic rod or a couple ceramic rods is very important for a lightweight and field expedient sharpening system. But I also think having something like a little pocket strop is super, super useful because a lot of times our tools don't have to get dull. So long as you stay on top of them and, you know, you're making sure that you're dropping them uh, you don't really have to worry about actually sharpening a tool a strop will usually be all you need unless you're doing something like skinning out a moose or a deer or a bear or some large game animal oftentimes a strop is realistically all you need to keep your edges in check so making sure you carry something small something really easy like this strop is a great addition to any bushcraft pack Okay, next to that, and it might seem a little bit silly, but something I've honestly been keeping in my pack more and more here of late is a flannel. And sometimes you'll see me wearing it, sometimes you won't. Oftentimes, like right now during the heat of the day, I will not usually wear a flannel because it's too hot to wear one. But especially at the beginning or the end of the day, I like to wear a flannel for the extra added kind of protection uh, or kind of heat that a flannel offers. But Aside from that, what I also, but aside from that, what I usually also like about a flannel, and I'm not particular about the brands per se, honestly, I would say try to go with a cheaper one so you're not scared to damage it because out here it will likely get damaged, but uh, having a flannel can not only help you 
you know, when it's cooler outside. But it also, one of my favorite things about wearing a flannel is bug protection, because obviously if you have something, because if you have something or you're wearing something that is covering parts of your body, but is loose enough that it's not contacting your skin, things like mosquitoes can't really bite you through those pieces of clothing. So it can be great or a flannel can be great for bug protection as an added layer uh, to, you know, help keep yourself a little warmer. It also can, you know, be used as something like a pillow if you want to take a rest during the midday or, you know, at night. Um, it can be used in many, many different ways. So just keeping something like a flannel in your backpack honestly doesn't take up that much space. But once again, a flannel being similar to a drop cloth. You know, there's so much versatility to these things. You can use them in a bunch of different ways, and they're just handy to have, you know, on standby. So a flannel is the next part that should be in your backpack. Okay, the last one, and this wouldn't quite be a full video if we didn't talk about a few tool options, but I think the Condor Pterosaur is another great option for throwing in your bushcraft pack. Maybe this isn't your go-to bushcrafting knife, or maybe it is. But whether it's a backup or a mainline camp knife, having a good camp knife, something like the Condor Pterosaur or the Mora Bushcraft Black, is a really solid option that you should make sure that you have. And maybe even have a backup in the pack just in case you need okay, it. guys, so you've gotten to see what my 10 items are, what I think the 10 items that you should include in your pack are. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and let me know what you guys think anyone or everyone should carry in their packs when they go bushcrafting. Like I said, this has been my few items. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and as always, God bless and I'm out.